Hi, my name is Ilya. I'm a sales coordinator at Proall, and today we'll be taking a close look at the Proall Pneumatic Fiber Feeder System. This is an air-driven system designed to supply a controlled flow of microglass fiber to your concrete mix. The fiber feeder consists of three main components. The fiber feeder cabinet is loaded with a spool of microglass fiber. The loose end located inside the center of the spool is fed into the tubing through the top corner of the cabinet. On the other end of the tubing, the fiber is fed into the fiber cutter where it is chopped and dispensed into your concrete mixture. Finally, the air pressure control valve is used to adjust the flow rate of the fiber. Loading the fiber feeder. Always ensure you use proper protective equipment such as cut resistant gloves when working on the fiber feeder. Start by locating the loose strand of fiber inside the center of the fiber spool. This can be easier to do outside of the cabinet. Next, load the spool of fiber into the cabinet and feed the loose end into the tubing attached to the top corner of the cabinet as far as you can. Use an air compressor to blow the strand of fiber all the way through the tubing. The easiest way to feed the fiber through the tubing without compressed air after loading your first spool is to never let it run out completely. When using fiber in your mix, keep an eye on your running spool. As you run out of a spool, tie the end of your new spool of fiber to the end of the old spool and use that to pull through your new strand of fiber. At the other end of the tubing, flip open the clamps securing the cover of the fiber cutter and remove the cover. Next. Feed your strand of fiber into the top hole of the fiber cutter. The fiber cutter contains sharp blades, so cut resistant gloves are required for safe operation. With the strand of fiber in the top hole of the fiber cutter, use your free hand to rotate the anvil counterclockwise until the strand of fiber is caught between the anvil and cutting wheel and begins to feed. Once the fiber is caught in the fiber cutter, setting button 15 on the mixer control panel to prime where the button light is amber, will cause the fiber to run through the fiber cutter. Replace the cover. Operating the fiber feeder. When a mix design calls for fiber, determine the amount of fiber required per minute based on your calibration and set your fiber flow rate by setting button 15 on your mixer control panel to prime mode, where the amber light is illuminated. The fiber feeder will begin to run and dispense the fiber onto the belt. Turn the knob of the air pressure control valve to increase or decrease fiber output. Once your fiber flow rate has been set, press button 15 again until it begins flashing green to stop the fiber feeder. It is now armed and will run when the belt is activated. Keep in mind that the fiber feeder discharge rate does not change proportionally with changes in the conveyor belt speed. Record the conveyor speed setting when calibrating the fiber feeder and use that conveyor speed whenever the fiber feeder is used. Blade replacement and cutter adjustment. Always ensure you are wearing cut resistant gloves when performing a blade replacement. A blade replacement can be performed with the cutter completely mounted on the mixer, though it is easier to do with the cutter removed. The black exhaust line cannot be disconnected, but is long enough to allow for the cutter to rest on the fender for servicing. Always disconnect the airline before servicing. To disconnect the airline, push up on the green sleeve and pull down on the red hose. Next, using a 7 16 socket and wrench, remove the bolt used to attach the cutter bracket assembly to the mixer. This will give you the freedom to move the fiber cutter to a more comfortable position. Using the same tools, remove the two bolts used to attach the fiber cutter to the bracket. The fiber cutter is now free and ready for servicing. To replace the blades, open the tension lockdown lever and loosen the tension adjustment knob by turning it clockwise. Press and hold the motor lock button to prevent the cutter from spinning. Using a 5 16 socket or wrench, loosen the cutter head clamp screw and remove the cutter head clamp. Remove the blades from the cutter head clamp.
and seat new blades into the clamp. The cutter head clamp is magnetized for blade installation. Ensure blades are well seated with the edges facing out. For finer cut fiber, you can install all eight blades. To cut fiber into larger pieces, you can install only four blades, leaving a gap between each blade. Replace the cutter head clamp with the new blades back onto the cutter head. And using a 5 16 socket or wrench, tighten the cutter head clamp screw while holding down the motor lock button. Tighten the tension adjustment knob by turning it counterclockwise until the anvil makes enough contact with the blades to turn the cutter head and close the tension lockdown lever. Reinstall the fiber cutter on the mounting bracket using the same 7 16 socket and wrench and reconnect the airline. Refeed the fiber. Test to ensure proper tension by setting button 15 on your mixer control panel to prime for several seconds to allow the fiber feeder to dispense fiber onto the belt. Examine the cut fiber to ensure it is being cut properly. If strands are not being cut consistently, open the tension lockdown lever and slightly turn the tension adjustment knob counterclockwise to increase tension. Also inspect the anvil for excessive wear after testing. To minimize anvil and blade wear, use the minimum tension required to cut the fiber. Make small adjustments to tension as necessary and close the tension lockdown lever. Replace the cover.